Okay, we, I want you to do something for me. I want you to get your cell phone out and hold it up in your right hand and put your seed in your left hand. Okay, you can't use your cell phone, of course. But I want you, everybody, hold on, just feel those for a second. Okay, I am here in just a few minutes to convince you that the seed is a more powerful technology and actually more valuable to you, that literal seed, than your cell phone, okay? So let's get started. I spent my whole productive life in and around seeds. About 33 years ago, I was trying to find seeds for my own garden when I was in college. And in trying to find the right seeds or the best seeds for my own garden, I discovered something. And that was, we were on the verge of um, completing a system that would result in the loss of about 90% of the genetic diversity in our agriculture. That was the prediction. The Center for Biodiversity in an article in National Geographic has now said that it's 96% we've actually lost. And I remember something from high school biology when I was discovering this. And um, it went something like, the strength of any ecosystem is its diversity. If there's one ecosystem we're going to need as we go forward on this planet, it is our food system. And so that ecosystem should be the one that we pay attention to. And so I was on my way to law school. I went, oops, somebody ought to work on this, at least for a little while. And I thought I would be done in about three years. And here I am 33 years later still working on it. And so what are we going to do? What, here we have this incredibly large industrial agriculture and plant patenting, making agriculture larger and even more monocropped on one side and losing all this diversity, the strength of this ecosystem on the other. And so it's a huge problem. And so I suggest a radical, but yet really American answer in a way, new technology. All right, and, and I've come to understand sort of what's happened to us as an industrial storm. It's brought us lots of things, but I s now see that it's starting to break up and people all over the world are starting to wake up and get involved in the technology that I'm promoting. There it is, a seed, the one that you have in your hand. Seed is technology. For modern Americans, that might be a stretch. This is an electron microscopic picture of a seed. Every seed is this complex. Every seed is this magical in a way. It's a living, breathing embryo. I think people forget that. It's a living thing. Not only is it living, but it's self-replicating. And that's probably its highest value as a technology. So if you hold your cell phone up, you just have your cell phone. If I hold a seed up, I have millions of more seeds packed inside, literally. It's a hardware and software program wrapped so eloquently that it can self-replicate. And not only can it self-replicate, but on each iteration through its life, it can take information from its immediate environment and use that to change its own DNA and then form itself back up into a seed and then wait and live and breathe as a seed form. How long? Well, the oldest seeds to germinate are date palms found in a tomb in Egypt that are 2,000 years old. We have a date palm that's about this tall. These were carbon dated. There's no discussion about how old they were. And so for all that we've done as humanity, all the technology that we are so proud of, that we believe in is going to save us, we don't have anything this elegant. And so what does this mean? Literally, on a planet that's going toward 9 billion people that need to eat. And I know that um, that's a topic that needs discussion. And it's a very important topic. So what does this technology mean? It means literally, I can take a pocket full of seeds with me anywhere on this planet and start a new agriculture. Somebody says, well, you don't have enough. Yeah, I do. Self-replicating. I got millions more right here. Takes a year or two, but we can set up systems everywhere to grow enough food for everybody. And it adapts. All the seeds that we take everywhere, especially if we're like 
we are here in the Southwest, we start with ones that are already adapted, the 4% we haven't lost yet, we're down the road to having something that works here with fewer inputs. That's the magic of these seeds. Probably the best story about this um, can be um, given shortly um, in a short amount of time is about Teosinte. Any, how many people here have heard of Teosinte? Anybody know what that? We've got a few hands up. Teosinte is the wild crop relative of all modern corn. This is where it came from. It's a grass about 18 inches tall, um, central Mexico. It's where it's native. And if you'll just come with me in a sort of a conceptual journey for a second, imagine 8,700 years ago, that's the earliest archaeological evidence we have of this, tribes stopped and camped permanently near fields of Teosinte and started saving seeds from it and planting them themselves and started saving seeds from ones that were a little bit bigger and a little bit better. And they made their crop a little bit bigger and a little bit better, and they started feeding themselves. And that's the start of agriculture on our continent 8,700 years ago. And you can sort of imagine somebody really arrogant walking out into one of these fields of Teosinte, grabbing a handful of these seeds, little teeny black rocks, holding them up and saying, hey, you guys, guess what I have in my hand? Just like you have your seed, guess what I have? I have hardware and software in my hand that will feed three civilizations, Maya, Inca, and Aztec, literally inside a handful of seeds. You could have brought out the genetics and created what we've created, okay? Three civilizations and have enough left over for what we now call the United States of corn, the greatest nation on the history of the planet, all inside of one hand. That's how powerful this technology is. And so as we made this journey, you can sort of see what happened. And all of these varieties and everything that you see in modern corn happened because of the same simple ritual that started 8,700 years, 700 years ago on our continent, just saving seeds from something that we like that would feed us better. And this was us, this was, was without Mendelian genetics, this was without large institutions, this was us. We created a huge diversity in the world. You can see some of this, some of the beauty. Your cell phone will play video games. Maybe this is the kind of video game we should be playing. This is an open pollinated variety of corn called Glass Gym that was created by uh, a Cherokee man, and it's not genetically modified. And it was just saved over a 20-year period from kernels that he found were beautiful. So there's beauty in corn also. So what can you do? If you think about it, it took 228 generations, 228 generations to go from Teosinte, 18-inch high grass, little hard rocks to modern corn, which now fuels, it's, they say it's in 80% of our food in this country, okay? And we're the 229th generation. And so what is our responsibility? Now that you have your seed in your hand, what are you gonna do? Is this it for diversity in this ecosystem? Is that, we're just gonna go 228 generations to create a plethora of Diversity, every single ecological niche and cultural niche on the planet had its own variety of corn. And now we're down to just a handful of varieties left. So are we just going to let that disappear? Or are we going to step up and rejoin this ritual? And so that's really what I want you to think about doing, is rejoining this ritual. I think it really does hold our hope. I think it's arrogant to think that we can feed 9 billion people. We have the most elegant, decentralized, personal computer-like technology that we could ever imagine that we can carry around in our pockets that we can give to anyone if we could just help them to develop the time, the space, the energy, the water now, and those sorts of things so that they can feed themselves. I just think that's a better, a better way to go. So rejoin the ritual with me, please. And if you do save some seeds, take them down and check them into your... Um, local seed library. 
You don't have one or you haven't heard of these? It was just on NBC News this last Friday night. There are now 140 seed libraries in the United States. It started in the last year and a half. As our human, our cultural, I'd like to think our American response to this loss of diversity, people all over the world, and especially America, are waking up to take this back into their own hands. So now you can go down to Pima County Library. They have seed libraries in seven branches, and you can check seeds out for free. And you can learn how to save them. The information's there. They'll get you hooked up if you need it. And then when you learn to save some of your own seeds that are now adapted to your small eco niche, take them back and check them in and write the story down. And in this way, we make this a public resource again. And we start to create this diversity. And so I think in 10, 000, it's been 10,000 years of, of agriculture, roughly since the last ice age, that's created this diversity. Humans just doing the simple ritual. And in our generation, we lose 96% of it. I call that the pinch, down to 4% left. And I'm optimistic. I think we're seeing evidence the industrial storm is breaking up, and we're going to start growing this back. And I think in 1,000 years, in 1,000 years, people will be sitting in their beautiful green gardens. They'll be drinking their local beer and their local bread and eating their fresh-picked vegetables the way most people do in Europe today that we've sort of lost and we're kind of getting to. And they'll look at this period in history. They'll go, wow, you know those people in the early 21st century, you know, where we lost almost all the diversity and a few people woke up and they saw beyond the religious dogma of their time and the technological um, uh, distractions of their time and the political systems of their times. And those people saw through all of that and they saw what was most important. They got involved in saving diversity. And now we have it. So thank you, I just, thank you.